This is just going to be a quick recap of the latest Lenovo Legion news and where the Legion Go currently stands in my small handheld library. First I'll just say that I haven't had the best experience with the Legion Go. And if you know me from earlier videos and my guides, I'm pretty familiar with Windows, but this has to be the worst experience I have ever had on a Windows based handheld device. If you haven't watched my initial review video, please check it out. I list both the good and the bad so far in my Go experience. On to the news. I'm going to cover what has happened since the launch of the Legion and go. First it was noted that the AMD drivers provided were extremely outdated. A message was announced that they were including new AMD drivers really soon. This was available around November 3rd on their website in China, but it did not show up on the US website until November 6th. This seems to just be the way that they function since they're based out of China. Unfortunately, users found that these drivers were still outdated. Despite Lenovo marking the release of the drivers as new, they're from September, and so they're basically the Starfield drivers that the Ally has. They're are October drivers that have been released by AMD that the Ally has that the Go does not. So the Go is still missing the actual latest drivers. Some people have been sideloading the AMD drivers for the 7840U device, and while that works and could provide better performance, it can cause compatibility issues with certain games. If you're interested, here's a good guide from DeckWizard to install them. There's also been a beta BIOS that leaked through the Legion Go unofficial subreddit. Someone posted there that claims to have obtained it from Lenovo. It offers the ability to turn on and off SMT, but more importantly offers a VRAM setting of 6GB compared to the 3GB default. This can help performance for certain games that use a lot of texture memory. On the Ally, 5GB or 6GB seem to be the sweet spot for most modern gaming. However, we do not have a 5GB option at this time on the go. If you're interested in installing this, I have a video on my channel that guides you through backing up your BIOS first and then installing the new one. Keep in mind that since it's not a officially hosted on Lenovo's website, I can't 100% verify that it is officially from Lenovo. The other big piece of news is that we finally got a new version of Legion Space, version 1.0.2.2. This was released on November 10th. If you didn't install a leaked version of Legion Space, then you should just be prompted to install this when you launch Legion Space the next time. Does this solve all of the biggest problems, like controller mapping and the custom performance mode? Not at all. It's honestly just a very minor update. All that has been changed is that the user interface now has gone from a light blue to a darker blue, even more reminiscent of a Steam OS clone. Then the other noticeable item is that they took out the toggle for the sidebar on the right legion button. Now when you press it, it's just going to show the right sidebar menu. Once you press it again, it goes away. To get the left sidebar, you need to press the left legion button to bring up legion space. Then you either tap or use the trackpad on the menu button on the bottom left. Then you can choose the four square button to minimize. It's quite a bit of work to get there and I've already asked if they could just make a win plus tab hotkey to fix this. That will bring up all the available applications in a menu that you can just tap on or click on. Lastly there is a toggle option inside of the Legion Space settings menu to prevent Legion Space from launching right away at startup and that is it for the Legion Space update. That's all we got after the launch date, 11 days after the release. Obviously, a lot of software fixes are needed, and it just may take more time than people expect. The update information post is by Ben Myers, a product manager for the Legion Go. He does highlight all the items that they're working on, such as adding the ability to set dead zones to fix certain games, DPI settings for the trackpad, some vague mention of game profile setting changes, and promises for further development on the gyros. If you didn't know, they did announce that there is a gyro in the main unit and the two controllers, so a total of three gyros. Although I'm not really seeing any good customization options in Legion Space for this yet. Ben did also highlight that they're aware of all the requests that we've made on the forum so far, like controller mappings or bindings to keyboard, additional VRAM settings, custom fan curve options, FPS limiter, fixing refresh rate, the FPS counter being broken in the overlay, both issues I experience and mention in my review, as well as additional supported languages and some audio tweak recommendations. Ben says there's a BIOS that they're currently working on to address some of these issues, but it seems like the VRAM portion is already in the leaked beta BIOS, so we'll have to see what else arrives when the official stable release is available. However, this post from Ben basically ends with a disclaimer saying that they may or may not address any of the issues mentioned. It's really just a way to say, we hear you, and we'll see what we can do, but no promises for any requests. If you 
have any questions or feedback for Lenovo about the Go, then they've asked to please create an account on their Lenovo forums and add it as a reply to their latest update. The link for the update news is in the description. In there, you can also upvote other posts to show how important they are. As far as the community updates, there has been a release of Handheld Companion that supports the Legion Go that's available through their early access on their Patreon. If you're not familiar with Handheld Companion, it's supposed to be an entire controller software suite that covers a variety of handheld devices. This includes things like setting up a custom performance mode and actual working controller mappings, including gyro support. However, the Legion Go still isn't 100% supported. Users have reported that the controllers do not work properly when disconnected from the main unit. Normally after one to two weeks of being in early access, handheld companion updates are then made available for free on their GitHub if you don't mind waiting. The link for their Patreon and GitHub is in the description. Really quickly, I'm just going to conclude with my thoughts on the current state of the Go. The hardware is good, the software is not. Plain and simple. I'm personally struggling with either keeping my ROG Ally or the Go. My ROG Ally just feels easier to use and less complicated. Yes, it has less features when it comes to the controller, like a trackpad, but the back buttons on the Legion Go serve no purpose right now. Additionally, the Go software is struggling with other basic features. These are things I'm sure they're going to iron out, but in its current state, it's just not ready. Lenovo is promising another Legion Space update by November 30th. With most return windows still being available to January, this next version of Legion Space is really going to be the defining moment of whether or not Lenovo is actually up to the tasks that need to be met. This next update is going to need to be more than just a dead zone fix and DPI adjustment. What do you think about the current state of the Legion Go? Do you think that Lenovo will come out on top of this, especially in the shadow of the Steam Deck OLED announcement? Leave your comments below and we'll see you next time.